think a lot of us get into a terrible meat rut. It's always steaks, chops, saddle of lamb, beef wellington, or hamburgers. Well, here's a little change of pace, uh, some variety with sweetbreads and brains. We're doing them today on The French Chef. <laughs> The French Chef is made possible by a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated and a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. You know, I think sweetbreads and brains are rightly called variety meats because they do give tremendous variety to one's meals and you can cook them in such a variety of ways. I think a lot of us for tend to forget sweet breads and brains and it's too bad because they're absolutely delicious. They have a lovely delicate taste and the various sauces and things you can serve on them just make them ex extremely attractive. And I'm going to start out on brains this time today and these are calves brains all ready to all ready to cook. Of course you can get lamb, beef and pork brains but calves' brains are a little more delicate and more usual, and sometimes it's difficult to get brains at all. You sometimes just have to order them ahead of time. And when you're buying them, you want to get oh, one pound for two to three people, and they're extremely perishable. And when you buy them, you should bring them home and then try, uh, get them ready for cooking right away. Uh, and also, if you want to smell them, they should be, have a delicious, fresh smell. And if they have any odor at all, except of a lovely freshness, take them right back and complain bitterly. And as soon as you get them home, you should prepare them. And by preparing them, that means to soak them. Now here is the brain, as you will probably get it when it comes. They usually come packaged, but as you notice, there's some dark areas here, and that is blood. And you notice these, which have already been soaked, are perfectly plain and clear and sort of a very pale pinkish white. And the soaking of it removes the blood. And this is, some brains have, have less than others. So you get a big bowl of cold water, and the first thing you do is to put it, put the brains into cold water and let them soak enough so that it will loosen this little filament which is on top, and you have to lift it up and with your fingers separate that filament. And it's a little bit difficult to do, and they're very delicate. But the reason you want to separate this filament is to, you see this area of blood in here. If you don't separate the filament, you, the water won't do any good. You could soak them all day and nothing would happen. So you just very delicately pull this off, and you notice these little convolutions and then soak it again and do this with all of them. But just be very delicate, and it's never a very quick process peeling off this little filament. And you, after you've peeled off as much as you can, you then change the water and soak them again. And I always soak them in the refrigerator in ice water because it preserves the brains and also, and also keeps them fresh. And then after they have become as pale after you've gotten most of the skin off and they've become pale and white, then put in some more water, and then also to whiten them more, um, put in for each quart of water about a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of lemon juice, and the lemon juice also makes them softer and whiter. But as long as you keep them in the icebox, they'll keep in the roof, they'll, and keep them chill, they'll keep quite well for a day. But <clears throat> as soon as you can, and as soon as you have them whitened, you want to you want to cook them. But before you cook them, I took these away before I was quite ready. You want to trim them. Now you see, with this one, it has uh, sort of a white area that looks like a tube, and you want to take that off, and always handle them with extreme precaution. And they're little 
bits of white parts trailing also. And that you take off. And then you're ready to cook them. And you can cook them in several different ways. And some people like to blanch them first. <coughs> and blanching if, is a good idea if you have seen, say, some beautiful brains in your market. And you want to get them, but you're not ready to cook them right away. You would, it's a very good idea to blanch them first, and then that will keep them another day or so. And so very gently, they, you transfer them into a casserole. I mean, a little saucepan. Brains, by the way, in French are called cervelle, and calves' brains are cervelle de veau. And now for the blanching them, you put them in a little saucepan that will just hold them, and then cover them with boiling water. I have a boiling water gadget here, which is very convenient. And cover them with boiling water up to about two inches. And the reason you want boiling water is because the boiling water sort of firms them up immediately. And then set them over heat. And again, you want some salt and some lemon juice. And for each quart of water, about a tablespoon of lemon juice and a teaspoon, about a teaspoon and a half of salt. And then for the cooking of them, this is called poaching. And you want to just bring them up to the bare simmer so the water is just uh, shivering. It's not really actually simmering them. And then do not cover them. Just keep them at that very bare shiver for uh, 20 minutes. And if you're cooking beef brains, you cook them for about 25 minutes. It depends on the size. If, you have, if the brains come from a small calf, they'd be a little, little, uh, a little smaller, and you cook them 15 minutes. But it's 15 to 20 minutes. And for beef brains, which are larger, they'd be 30 minutes. And if you had lamb brains, which are very small, they'd be about 15 minutes. But just hold them like that, uncovered it below the simmer. And then after you've counted your, say, 15 to 20 minutes, then you take them off heat and let them cool in their liquid. And this cooling in their liquid also allows them to firm up a little bit. Now here are some that have, that have been cooked and cool. And as you can see, when you lift them, they don't have this extremely, that, this extreme softness that the uncooked brains have. And then, if you're not going to use them right away, you should just refrigerate them in their saucepan. And you can do these, say, ahead of time and put them in the refrigerator, but keep them covered with liquid. And then, after they have completely cooled off, some cooks like to weight them down between two plates. And they like to do this because it, it flattens them out and then it also presses them together so that they're a little bit easier to slice if you're going to cook them sliced and saute. Then they're in the plate, and you set another plate on, and then put something like a two-cup a two cup measure on so it just pushes them down. And then there are many ways to serve them and sauce them. The, I think one of the nicest ways is to cut them in slices and saute them with a brown butter sauce. And that is called cervelle de veau sauté au beurre noir. And for these, you want to slice. And for this, you want to slice them first. Now, these haven't been weighted down, so the slicing, you, the, end, the edges of them sometimes come apart. But just take a very sharp knife and really just press down on them. You see how extremely delicate they are. And then you're going to saute them in clarified butter, which means simply melted butter. And you just use the very the clear melted butter on the top. And you don't want to use any of that milky, milky liquid, because that will speckle and burn. And then you want to flour the brains. And I'm going to do that on, put on a little salt and pepper first. 
and then put some flour on, and the flour is going to hold them together. And I have a piece of wax paper here, and I'll just quickly, and this is just at the last minute, you roll them in flour and be sure that you handle them very carefully indeed because they break. You want to have your butter good and hot, so I'm keeping an eye on it so that it's hot but not burning. And this is just, just rolling them in flour. Flour is, is very useful because you use it for fish too, just because it keeps things together as you saute them. Now the butter's hot. So in they go. And see, as they're already cooked, all you really have to do in the sautéing is just to brown them. And, be sh and you have to just sauté them in one layer. So if you want to do a great many of them, you'd have to have two pans, or you'd sauté them, eh, you'd sauté them and transfer them to another dish and keep them warm. And it's only about two or three minutes on each side, or just enough to brown them. Get some of the flour off my hands now. You see, once you get the soaking and the peeling done, it's really, they're very easy to cook, and there are all kinds of other sauces that you can use, use them for. If you don't want to saute them, you can uh, put them in a, in a casserole with a little melted butter and heat them very gently until they were warmed up. And then you can, and then you could put on, oh, say a brown sauce with chopped ham and a little Madeira wine in. But I think this saute meunier is one of the very nicest way of doing them, mainly because it's so simple and it smells so good. Now they get turned over. I'm not browning them completely on each side. I'm just giving you mainly the idea of how to do it. But you can see how careful you have to be with them. But they're beginning to firm up nicely as the butter is browning. I mean, as the flour coating is browning. And you can, before you saute them, you could uh, Put on some salt and pepper and, and parsley, like a, little, like a little vinaigrette or French dressing, and let them marinate in that for two or three minutes. I mean two or three minutes, I mean about 20 minutes. And that will give them a little extra flavor. But I think that with the rest that we're going to have, the rest of the ingredients we're going to have here with capers and parsley, that I think this is going to have, they're going to have plenty of flavor as it is. And you can do, you can do sweetbreads exactly the same way. But this, this beurre noir is a favorite way of doing very delicate foods like, like fish or like brains because it, it keeps their initial purity and then it gives them a little added flavor when you get the capers on. Now, when those are nicely browned, you take them out onto a hot serving dish. You could, you could saute them whole, but I like them in slices because I like the, I like that lovely brown taste of the, brown taste of the floured slices. Now, now we're going to finish the sauce beurre noir, in which again you put some clear butter. And be sure that this is the clear butter, because you don't want it to speckle. And then you cook that until it just turns a light nutty brown, which is about just about a minute or two. And if, you're, if your serving dish is hot, they'll stay warm. Otherwise, you can cover it with another dish and keep them warm. But this just takes a moment to do. And then as soon as that's turned just a light nutty brown, 
take some capers and put them in. And then some parsley. And then just, that just gets poured over the sweetbreads. That's really, it's, de it's delicious. And then of course you have to serve it immediately while it's lovely and bubbling hot. Now the uh, sweetbreads are, just remember that they're terribly delicate to handle and so that when you're handling them or saucing them, just use extreme precaution with them. The, I mean the brains are, the sweetbreads are much easier because they're, they're not quite as delicate and you don't have to be so careful. And here are the sweetbreads. And sweetbreads are the, the thymus gland of the calf. And that's a gland that is just in the calf and it is right at, at its throat. And then as it, the calf becomes older, the thymus gland just disappears. And here is a whole sweetbread. You rarely see a whole one in the market because they're usually separated, but I wanted you to see what it looked like. There are two pieces. There are this larger piece, which is called the kernel or the heart, and in French that's called the noix or nut. And then you have a more elongated and rougher piece here, which is called the throat sweetbread. And it's separate, and they're attached by sort of a tube, and you have to separate this. In my market, these they, they all come separated from the tube, but when you buy them in France, because the French always like to see exactly what they're getting, they are whole, so that you know that exactly that it is a sweetbread, because nothing else looks like it. And this you just, you just sort of gently but firmly pull off. And you can save this, uh, this tube business, and you can use it in a stock pot. And here you have your two pieces. And also, with the sweetbread, you have to soak it too, because you want to get rid of the, you want to whiten it. And it, it also has a little filament on top of it. So after you, you first you soak it, and that loosens the filament. This is just exactly as it is with the, with brains, and then you see there's this little filament right up, right on top, and you very gently pull that apart, pull that off, and this again, this again takes two or three hours of soaking before you can get all of this filament off. You just pull off as much as you can and then soak it again in some cold water, and again, uh, as with brains, the sweetbread is perishable too. It's not quite as perishable as brains. But you should cook it as soon as possible. Now here's, this is the larger piece, the, the, the heart one. And this one is the choice piece. As you see that, the one that I was first doing was, had many more separations. You see this one is a, fuller piece, and that one is not nearly as nice. And for these, when you're buying sweetbreads, you want to buy, uh, again, about one pound of sweetbreads for two people. And then when you're ready to cook them, you can blanch sweetbreads, too, if you want. And if you have to keep them for a long time, I mean, for, another, for a day or so, it's a good idea to blanch them. But the, and if you do blanch them, you start them in cold water and then you blanch them just the way you do the, uh, do the brains with some lemon juice and salt and for about 20 minutes and then you immediately take them out and refresh them in cold water and that firms them up. So they're just a little slightly different than brains in the, in the blanching process in that they start cold and end cold. But the very best way, I think, to do brains and sweetbreads too is to braise them because it gives them a great deal more flavor. And that means that you're going to cook them in some seasoned liquid. This is the kind of, the, this is called aromatic vegetable, which we've done a great many times. And this is, or we're going to do about six sweetbreads, so you want about, 
or a third to a half a cup of very finely diced carrots and celery and some onion. And these are also going to cook in butter. So I'll put a little bit of my melted butter in here. We're going to have about five or six sweetbreads or about a pound and a half. And so I want about two or three tablespoons of butter. And here go our carrots and onions in there. And I'm going to turn, put this over so they'll start cooking. That's carrots and celery. And then we have an onion. You'll find that so many of the French recipes start out this way with, with these aromatic vegetables. And I think that's one reason that, that things cooked the French way have so much flavor. Just these few little minutes of cooking some of these things makes all the difference. And you want to cook these vegetables with the cover on for oh, eight or 10 minutes until they're completely tender, and thus they will give out their flavor. And then you put in your raw soaked sweetbreads. You just lay them right in on top of your cooked vegetables. And you want to be sure and choose a casserole or pan that will just hold them nicely in one layer. They shrink up a little bit as they cook. So I have room for one more in there. And then you put on salt and pepper and cover the pan and let them what they call sweat for five minutes. And then you turn them, and they will have stiffened and whitened just a little bit. And you let them sweat again for five minutes. And then you're ready to do the actual braising. And you've turned them after this. And then after this 10-minute sweating period, which is called suet in French, you'll find that probably there's a bit of liquid or juice in the pan. And this you pour out and boil down because you're going to add some more flavoring. And then after that point, you put in an herb bouquet, and that is just parsley and uh, about six sprigs of parsley and a quarter of a teaspoon each of thyme and bay. And then you're ready for the braising. And you want to add a some white wine. I'm going to put in about a quarter of a cup of white wine or dry white vermouth. And then some kind of stock. If you had homemade stock, that's very nice. I'm going to use some canned beef bouillon. And you want just enough barely to cover the sweetbreads. And then bring them up, bring them up to the simmer, and then they then go into the oven. So that's really is very simple, and it just makes a delicious dish. And I'm now going to put these into the oven and get out my ready sweetbread so you can see how they look. These go into a 325 oven in the lower middle and simmer very quietly for 45 minutes. And then after they've simmered for 45 minutes, out they come. And the nice thing about this is that you can, you can serve them you can do them ahead, and you can also, after they've been braised, there they are, you can also serve them cold in a salad, which is delicious, which is a very French way of doing things. I don't think we do it that very that much that way in this country, and we should because they're lovely. Now, these are all hot, so they're ready to be served and ready for the sauce to be made. So they come out on the platter. And the vegetables that you cook them with stay right in. And these, they have the most lovely smell. And the, the flavor of those vegetables and wine and stock has gone all through the sweetbreads. And then you put them out onto a hot platter. And you want to boil down the juices and then you're going to make a sauce out of these lovely braising juices. You can make a white sauce or a brown sauce or just a very simple sauce with cream, and that's the kind that I'm going to make. And this one is going to have a little thickening of cornstarch. If you were, if you were French, rather than cornstarch, you'd use potato starch or rice flour. I think cornstarch works out very nicely. And then some 
heavy cream. And be sure that you mix that all up into a so that there are no lumps in it. And then let your, let your braising juices boil down to about, say, half a cup. And then pour in your cream. And then that you, then you have to allow that to boil for a, oh, a minute or two until it begins to thicken. And then if it's too thick, you can add a little more cream. And be sure that you be sure that you taste it to make sure that you may need a little lemon juice or something like that in. Just very good, and it's surprising how when it it's so simple. I'm gonna put just a little tiny bit more cream in there. And they usually don't need any lemon juice because you've had lemon juice all the time that you were that you were uh, soaking and but if you do put it in but be always sure that you taste very carefully and then as soon as it's boiled down to the thickness you like just spoon it right over your sweetbreads you see what a really very simple little sauce that is and an absolutely delicious one There, and then I think a little decoration of parsley would not be amiss. And also, that's one reason I wear a towel, so I can clean off the platter just a little bit. And now that's all ready to serve, and once you have it sauced, you should really serve it right away. There. Our braised sweetbreads. I'm going to serve you one so you can see how nice it looks on the plate. This makes a delicious main course. And put a little nice bit of that sauce over. And then with it, you can serve boiled potatoes or rice. I'll give this person one, two nicely shaped potatoes and green beans or peas. And that makes a lovely lovely main course and here are the the sauteed brains and with those you could serve exactly the same vegetables and with either one i would serve a nice dry white wine such as a taminaire or you could serve a rosé if you like so the cervelle de veau au berdoir that lovely aroma of capers and brown butter and these riz de veau a la creme. I could really eat, eat up every single one of them. If you've never tasted sweet brains or, I mean, sweet breads or brains before, you've really got a treat in store for you. I envy you that first mouthful. That's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. The French Chef has been made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation and a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated. Julia Child is co-author of the book Mastering the Art of French Cooking.